Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Dolezal. And with me today are my colleagues and friends, Alex Pars and Dan Nental. Today's date, just so as everyone is aware, is Wednesday, April 15th. Um, if you miss any of our videos, you can find them right here on Facebook or our uh, website, ironwoodfinancial.com. Uh, we apologize. We, we have issues every once in a while with Facebook, so we're unable to go live. But uh, hopefully you all are able to watch this uh, as a after fact. And if you have any questions from today, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. How are you guys? Good. Yeah? Pretty well, thank you. Wonderful. We want to start with inquiry minds want to know. So, Dana, what did you do last night? I actually think I did something that nobody has done yet in this uh, atmosphere of quarantine. Yep. Check this out. We went for a walk, and then we did a puzzle while watching Netflix. Ooh. <laughs> pretty unique. That is pretty exciting. How do you come up with that idea? That's right. I love it. Creativity. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, on Facebook, I'm seeing lots of advertisements for new things and creative things for your kids to do while they're at home. And I've seen a lot of these. Alex, have you seen these 3D puzzles for kiddos? Not recently. I mean, okay. I've been reading financial stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, before we get started in, the, in the, what we really want to talk about today, which was real estate, let's start with uh, a couple of fun stories. Alex, you shared with me that story about the little the kid and the fish. Tell, tell everybody what that was about this morning. I was just uh, some bored uh, sixth graders who were, didn't know what to do, so they put up a sign about a lost fish, and they interviewed this kid. It was pretty funny. What I thought was particularly amusing was he put down, responds to Charlie, do not chase, may act aggressive. <laughs> um, and then this... This other one I thought was very amusing. This was from a friend of mine uh, who I, from high school, and he swears this is true in something he got in his email. He's part of the Carnival Cruise Line frequent shopper program, whatever that is. Okay. And this was an advertisement he got yesterday. And, you know, makes sense, 30% off, 50%, $50 credits, two for one, free room upgrades. And then they say this down here. This is so fun, you may never have to leave it. So, <laughs> I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> right. But, you know, maybe they're just randomly extending people's cruises if they're uh, <laughs> having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, let's jump into it, boys. So we've got a lot of clients asking us, is right now the, a good time to buy real estate? We haven't touched this topic, so I think today's a good, a good chance to do that. So, Dana, let's start with you. Why don't you start with us, and let's talk about the commercial side first. And obviously, we don't get as many questions about buying commercial or industrial real estate, but it is something that's on our minds, uh, especially in light of, of today's news. I mean, obviously, we look up in the Market was down about one almost two percent, and a, a great deal of that was yesterday. The market was up because the optimism of the you know COVID nineteen. Today we're getting the IMF saying you know Katie bar the door, we don't know what's coming, and then we're getting the real estate earnings and the companies that uh, are out there trying to sell their wares, whether that's a a pot and pan or a, or a, a meal, is are they're just getting crushed and. Uh, we knew that was the case. We just didn't understand how badly the numbers were going to come in. And so now that segues into commercial real estate. If you think about it, if you go and uh, any place you get or go buy something local or you buy something national from a, a local store or a restaurant, you have to remember that those people are probably paying rent. And so you think about the trickle down scenario. Uh, if, if the restaurant doesn't have any patrons, they're most definitely reaching out to the owner of that building and saying, is there anything you can do to help me out? realize in more situations than not the owner of that building also has a lien and so the question is how far does that domino effect happen and so we're, we're really worried about commercial real estate another thing that's happening is uh, with what's going on in the COVID-19 you've heard a lot of blowback of let's we can't focus on having one country China making all of our goods yes it's a great deal and, and the fact that they've pegged their currency against ours made it has made it a great deal for a, a couple decades but the, you've heard a lot of things saying we need to diversify or we need to bring it back to the United States and, and, and build it back in America. Um, if you think about that, what's going to happen? If we bring those companies back, uh, they're going into the industrial space, 
Uh, they're not necessarily going into the commercial space. So that's not going to help the commercial buildings. We see the skyscrapers and the industrial, the idea is, well, at least that's creating jobs. Remember most times when those companies come back from overseas to get made in the United States, it's done with a lot, great deal of automation. Uh, so the commercial doesn't have a very good outlook. Um, on the industrial side, there are two factors. One is moving factories back. That's going to be good for the industrial space, those big warehouses done by the airport if you're local. Uh, and the other part is uh, what uh, Amazon, Costco, Sam's Club, a lot of the big box uh, grocery, Walmart retailers, what they realized in the supply chain issue is when we had this pandemic, they weren't able to get things like toilet paper uh, to the stores as quickly as they wanted. And so they've announced that they are going to be opening, opening up from what I've read, thousands of new distribution centers and warehouses that are going to be more closely connected to the, the region so that, that, heaven forbid, something like this happens again or it happens in the fall, as we addressed yesterday, uh, they will actually have the ability to serve the, their community and their customers in a more efficient manner. So industrial could be okay. Uh, the commercial probably not going to do so very well. And so... Uh, uh, Alex or Robin, any questions on that? Otherwise, we'll move on to probably a topic that more people are concerned about. Yeah, I mean, I, there's definitely uh, real estate commercially that you just drive by instead, right? The, the the FedEx stores of the world, the UPS stores are being slammed. You know, I even for myself, you know, you send grandma and grandpa or mom and dad something, so they have a puzzle <laughs> to do. But what it, what would you say the who's the most affected in this whole? industry well, or, or market the most devastated currently are any form of local you know maybe a, a local company has two or three restaurants or two or three stores and they're not able to work nobody can go in those stores sure we're getting takeout but it, they're just devastated um, but the world as we know it i mean we talked about this yesterday or when we talked about the, the the economy recovery will it ever get back to the world as we knew it i mean how many people are going to work remote forever that means less office space uh, when are we going to be able to go to a sporting event? And these, the commercial and big space real estate's affected maybe for the long term. Yeah, could be. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Alex, are you saying something? No, I just just agreeing with Dan. Oh, okay. Yeah, and before I get into you, Alex, I do want to say because I forgot to say a disclaimer: we are not real estate agents. This is just something that we've been we've been talking to friends. We have people in the industry that we talk to, but we are obviously not real estate agents in the commercial or real estate end. Um, but with that said, Alex, talk to us a little bit about what's going on uh, more on the residential side of things. And this is a really complicated, you know, look at all the different factors that are going into this sort of analysis. So you look at, you know, the big question, is it a good time to buy a home? And or is it better to wait three months from now to go buy a home? Or should I buy that vacation home? That's what the questions I keep getting. And What's interesting about it is it, as far as I can tell so far, it really depends. And what I mean by that is we keep seeing these stories and really the summary of what I've gotten is if you're looking to buy a home somewhere that was desirable, say in December, January, then you probably don't wanna do that right now. Okay? If you are looking to buy a home somewhere that was not particularly desirable, you know, like Sun Devil Country, then <laughs> maybe, then maybe you do want to do that now. And here's what I mean. Let's take a look at New York, California, et cetera. You know, they, they regularly sell homes there for $3 million, $4 million. The real estate market across the board has pretty much ground to a halt. People aren't going out, at least in April, to look at homes, to buy homes. It's really dropped off. You see that with the new mortgage application statistics. And so you could really make an argument that prices should go down. Well, in those big areas like New York, you know, the people who buy those three, $4 million homes, they're probably getting hurt income wise. And I'm gonna say that unemployment check of $600 a week isn't going to help very far to make that mortgage payments. Right. Also, those are jumbo loans. If you're getting jumbo loans, those are much more difficult to get. They're not securitized. When the banks are saying, hey, let's pull in our, you know, our borders, like JP Morgan is saying, where they now want 20% down instead of three to 5% and they want to have a much higher FICO score than before. That pulls a lot of buyers out of the market, particularly when you're looking at really high end stuff. So my personal belief is that the coasts, 
the really desirable places are going to get hurt more than the middle of America. So the, the, one, is on, the one upside though, right, for real estate is mortgage rates. Absolutely. And, and mortgage rates, particularly in the Fannie Freddie world, I think are going to continue to drop. That's just a wild guess. But with the action the feds have been taking, I wouldn't be at all surprised for the feds to say, go ahead, let's lower those rates even further to stimulate the economy as we come out of this, which will help people who are going to buy and get securitized mortgages. So those are mortgages under 500000 for the most part. Mortgages above that, well, that's now we're into something different. And that means the banks have to be willing to take that risk. And we don't have the government backing that we have on the lower ones. So yeah, yeah, the other tough thing to think about too is even if you do have a, you have the ability to go get a loan, you've got these great rates. You can't go see these residential, you know, homes, especially with going, what's going on with the pandemic. I mean, you can get a virtual tour, which is very popular, but how many people buy, you know, a five hundred or even a three hundred thousand dollar home on a virtual tour? Yeah, it's got to be extremely tough to be a realtor right now and actually close any deals. So that's that's a very tough one. Yeah. Other so factors. I, for you then. So if I'm hearing you correctly, the coast would probably see more dramatic effects as far as home value sales uh, or values or, or the, the sale price going down. If I'm hearing correctly, uh, we had a client send us the Tucson numbers. We actually went up eight, eight or 9% in March. Do you see that that trend continues in Tucson or places that aren't so dense in population? You know, it's very possible. There's a good, a bright side to this story, which is again, you can't foreclose on Fannie Freddie owned loans. That's going to put a lot of upward pressure, if you will, on prices or remove the downward pressure of forced sales. You know, you can basically defer your mortgage up to a year if you have enough hardship. Well, why would you get foreclosed on if you can defer for a year? And hopefully this is not nearly a bigger problem a year from now and we'll get those worked out. So we won't have the same downward pull again on securitized mortgages. On jumbo mortgages, the banks can do whatever they want. So they may foreclose, they may not foreclose. They may be more lenient than Fannie and Freddie are being, but that's a whole different story. We don't know the answer to that. Additionally, you know, as you said, rates might go down. And the unemployment thing might actually boost prices. There's really two factors that might boost prices in areas like ours. So right now in Tucson, the median home price is around $260,000, which isn't a whole heck of a lot of money compared to the rest of the country. So if you look at that and say, all right, let's take the example of somebody who's been stuck in their apartment in New York City for the last three months. You know, maybe that's a three or $4 million apartment and they're you know, really just can't do anything and they're stuck in 800 square feet. What do they wanna do next cold and flu season? Do they want to be there or do they want to be somewhere where, you know, golf courses are considered essential business? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. <clears throat> I mean, so I would expect we're going to see a flight from the big cities. Unless this is solved some way medically, I would expect people aren't going to want to go through that two years in a row if, or even have the possibility of going through that two years in a row. If, it, if that is the case and we get a resurgence. Yeah. So that's a possibility to push up markets like ours and middle America. The other one is the Airbnb phenomenon. And that's really a tough one. Places like New York, London, a big part of their rental markets had disappeared due to being part of the Airbnb market. One night rentals, two night rentals. Well, now that Airbnbs are effectively shut down because there's very little travel going on, those apartments, those rental homes have entered the rental market, which is putting a downward pressure on rental prices. And a downward pressure on rental prices also can put a downward pressure on sale prices. So we saw statistics, and I'm, this is off of my memory, this was about a week ago, but statistics that you know, 45 to 80% bigger rental pool of available rentals in cities like New York, London, et cetera, once again, the desirable places to go, like on vacation, that you're not going to right now. And Interesting. So... If I, again, I'm trying to, because all these questions I keep getting, you know, uh, I've had multiple, uh, is it a good time to buy a vacation property? It sounds like we should delay that because the phenomenon of the VRBOs, 
the fact that the stimulus isn't going to quite offset their mortgage and the high density, maybe it's a good time to wait as people flee the, the, the metros. Then it seems to me I heard Tucson should actually, or Tucson or middle America, smaller, smaller, less dense areas should do okay. Now, and then let's change that to could. Okay, I mean, but here's another could. Question I get, I bet, once a week, should I go buy a rental host? Well, it seems to me if you're going to buy middle America where the CARES Act is going to be much greater than rent, that could be a decent investment for someone as a diversification tool. It's, it, it could, uh, once again. I mean, obviously, this is still very, very unknown, right. and there, but there are reasons. I mean, I can tell you I got eight calls today from investors who want to buy, you know, want to try to get me to sell a home to them. You know, and I, so the, the investors at the moment are saying, yeah, we think this is still a good buying opportunity. Maybe we can scoop up some deals. Will prices go down? Again, 260000 If we get as much of a flight from the cities as is possible, you know, you can, set, you can buy a house here on a golf course for what, 500000 you know, a bit less than that. You know, you, that's a quarter of what you sell your house for in New York when you move, right? That's, that's nothing. I mean, so there are a lot of reasons why prices in an area like ours, maybe warmth is a good thing, right? right. Maybe it helps, you know, maybe it helps prevent disease or whatever. The less density, I'm relatively convinced, does help. So there, there are arguments to why we could go up. Obviously, the downsides are, you know, if we do get the 30% unemployment that the Fed is talking about, well, if you're unemployed, you probably can't get a loan, right? right. At least you couldn't last month. And so if you can't get a loan, that puts a lot of downward pressure on buyers in the market. Okay, well, if there's no buyers in the market, well, then, you know, prices should go down. But they've restricted supply. So right now people are saying, you know, I'm not desperate. I don't have to get out of this right now. I can't be foreclosed on. I'm just going to take it off the market for now. Right. Put it back after this is over. Yeah. And, and Alex, so I'm, I have a couple of questions. One's not going to do with real estate, but one is, so let's say you live in a, one of these fancy apartments around town that they have in every municipality in the country. And in, at least in our state, and I think nationwide, you don't have to pay rent for four months. Now, it does accrue, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah. What's going to be the result of the big apartment complexes, you know, they're they're dense. Uh, they're not getting paid in some situations. Is the prospect that rents will go down for those people, or is it, or is it the owners in trouble? What what should happen there? That that definitely is concerning. I mean, you've seen these articles about the rent strikes. You know, thirty percent of apartments didn't pay rent last in April. Stuff like that. And and what we're not seeing is we're not seeing that so far in single family homes. And part of it again is where you are. You know, if you're talking about an apartment in a small town where rent is 700 bucks and the government's now sending you 850 bucks a month or a week rather, are you going to pay rent? Probably. Yep. You, the concept is if enough people don't pay rent, then you don't have to because just like in the mortgage crisis, well, then nobody really cares. You know, you could get foreclosed on and then what was it? Six months, a year later, you could go buy a new house and get a mortgage. There was no disincentive to get foreclosed on. If that's true with rents, then yeah, okay. If everybody got evicted because they didn't pay rent, landlords are going to be desperate. They're going to take people with prior evictions and just write it off as bad times. Yes. But if the rents are low enough in areas like ours and the government checks are big enough, then you won't have that excuse. So you can't be the only guy who has an eviction on their, on their record that you know, when everyone else had enough money to pay. Makes In sense. LA, New York, your rent's $10,000 a month. Yeah, that's a different story. I would stay away from that. Somewhat of a follow-up question, but actually a different slant on the economy, and that is you referenced JP Morgan increasing their FICO score and requiring a much greater down payment. Uh, we talked about how that should probably affect home sales because not everyone has 25% cash, but history will tell us that the other big four will follow through on that same scenario as JP Morgan. What, what happens to those big banks? They've already taken, you know, yesterday was a bloodbath for them. And today. Um, and today that, you know, JP Morgan, or not, not JP, but the other big banks came with their earnings today. 
Uh, what's the outlook? We know what's going to happen to the real estate market potentially. What, what happens to them? I mean, wh why are they doing that? Well, they're putting aside huge amounts of reserves. And, and the good news is those reserves don't necessarily get used. So they, I think JP Morgan, just as an example, they put aside almost the same amount of money that they lost in the last great crisis and said, all right, we'll put aside 8 billion or whatever it was uh, for loan losses. So they make enough money that it's not gonna crush them. Is it gonna hurt their profitability? Yeah, I think I saw they were down 89% profits, you know, compared to a year ago. But it was kind of funny, I, reading up over the transcript of their you know, January conversation from Jamie Dimon, he said, you know, we just had our best year ever. Don't expect that to continue. Um, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> well, he effectively just tried to get, let all the skeletons out of the closet, showed an 89% decrease in earnings so that he'll come out of this, or JP Morgan will come out of this smelling like a rose. Yeah, which is a very common tactic with cor corporate earnings. If you've got bad news and everyone else has bad news, let's dump it all now, take all that old stuff that we were pushing and waiting and waiting, boom, gone. And that way we can say, oh, that was just a one time thing. And well, it'll get lost in the wash while everyone else is doing it. Interesting. Yeah, that's Thank a good you. Point. Um, one thing I wanted to mention that's different about this scenario too for residential real estate is we're not, you know, everyone likes to look at the last crisis and compare it to this. And, you know, that was much different for real estate, right? I mean, that was a bubble. There was fun something fundamentally wrong with real estate. And this time there's really not. It's just we're all trapped in our, in our houses and we can't buy real estate because of, you know, you can't get appraisals and you can't get mortgages. But if this does go away in the relatively near future, hopefully that won't affect real estate prices. I mean, you know, the market is much more agile and volatile in the real estate market. You know, if this goes away in, in a, a matter of weeks, that shouldn't, shouldn't adjust our values all that much as well. No, you can't see what your price did. I mean, yeah. what did your home price do today? It didn't do anything. Yeah. Won't, we won't know there's a lag in the real estate market. It's very possible that if the real estate market gets severely hurt by this, we won't see a bottom for 16 months, three years, who knows? I yeah. mean, it could take quite a while for the pain to ripple its way through this market. But again, on the plus side, you're stuck at home. Don't you wish you had a bigger place? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Everybody well, probably Jenna, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I think if you've got any questions, obviously we're not live today. So if you have any questions after viewing this, email us and we'll get those tomorrow. Uh, again, if you have any questions and you're not a client, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us at ironwoodfinancial.com or reach us toll free at 888-271-4646. Thank you guys. We will talk to you soon. Take care. Be safe, everyone.